Hey, my name's Stuart, and um, I live in Jefferson County, and I live by Shades Creek, and I like fish a lot. And I have three questions about Shades Creek and the Cobb River. First is, what type of um, shad are in the Cobb River? So we'll uh, consult my little fishes of Alabama. Uh, th this one is a uh, by Boshung and Maiden. There's another very good fishes of Alabama book by uh, Nati and. Uh, Pat O'Neill and a bunch of folks with the geological survey, that's also a very good reference. So either one of those will serve you well. Uh, it turns out that there's not only shad in the Cahaba, but there are four different species of shad in the Cahaba. We've got the gizzard shad and the threadfin shad. These are um, fish that filter feed, so they just kind of cruise through the water with their mouths agape filtering out phytoplankton, maybe a little zooplankton, but mostly uh, feeding on the floating algae in uh, big rivers and reservoirs and that sort of thing. They're pretty similar. You see the mouth on the gizzard shad is sort of, they call it subterminal, that is below uh, the bottom part of the head, whereas the thread fin that, that's right at the tip end. And then also another difference is that the, the little extension of their dorsal fin is fairly short on the gizzard shad and fairly long on the thread fin. So these guys run around in schools feeding in uh, a, a large number of fish just together and some people think that they're great uh, forage fish. It turns out the gizzard shad may actually grow so fast that it's not small enough for very long to serve as a, as a forage fish for uh, bass and sauger and striped bass and other things. The, the threadfin shad doesn't grow quite as rapidly. Um, so this will get uh, pretty quickly get up to be about a foot long and somewhat smaller but they just don't grow as rapidly. So those are uh, fish that you could say are, are herbivores whereas the, the skipjack and the Alabama shad are decidedly uh, fish eaters. They eat other fish. In fact, they eat the, the, <laughs> the gizzard shad for as long as they can. Now the skipjack, is it's a migratory fish and it, they don't run around in schools the way the, the gizzard shad and the threadfin shad do, but the skipjack are able to complete their life cycle in rivers uh, in Alabama. The Alabama shad, however, is an obligatory uh, marine species. That is, it has to live in the Gulf of Mexico, but they also have to run up rivers in order to spawn. So it's a, a legitimately anadromous fish that uh, requires fresh water for reproduction. So both of these, the skipjack and the Alabama shad, uh, eat other fishes. And they make quite a good uh, game fish that is they are uh, a lot of fun to catch so uh, on the east coast for example uh, a close relative of the alabama shad is called the american shad and it uh, is there's a very uh, popular fishery uh, on the east coast for the american shad so people have a lot of fun catching those now uh, i'll mention that the um, that the skipjack lives in, in rivers all through Alabama and it can it's probably inhibited in its migratory movements up and down the river because there are dams on this for example on the Alabama River and on the Tom Bigby rivers that keep it from moving as far as it might like to and uh, that's a, a real problem for the Alabama shad you can see here are the range records for that species and you can see that the open circles here are locations where it hasn't been found in quite a long time. So um, the dams that you find on the on the Alabama at Miller's Ferry and Claiborne keep the Alabama shad from uh, working its way up from the Gulf to reproduce. And that's not just important for the for the shad but also for some freshwater mussels because the Alabama shad and the skipjack herring whoop, oh, sorry, apologies, and the skipjack serve as a host for some of our nice uh, freshwater mussels. The um, 
there's a, a muscle called the elephant ear, and it uses both the skipjack and the Alabama shad as a, a host for uh, its reproductive cycle. And without these fishes, because of the dams, we're going to lose those freshwater mussels unless we can restore the connectedness of the river by allowing some kind of fish passage around those dams. So we're, along with state agencies and the Nature Conservancy and other folks are looking into how we might manage to get both the skipjack and the Alabama shad around Miller's Ferry and uh, Claiborne dams to restore those runs into the Cahaba where they can reproduce. And uh, as sort of an aside, also allow the, the freshwater mussels like the elephant ear to reproduce as well. So thanks for your question. I was probably more complicated than you expected or wanted, but uh, there you go. That's <laughs> the story about shad in Alabama and in the Cahaba River. Thank you. Second is, are there any channel catfish in the Cahaba River? So if we take a look at the entry for channel catfish, we see the state of Alabama there. Each one of those black dots is an occurrence of the fish. So you can see that it's very widespread in Alabama and even widespread in North America. Uh, the channel catfish, if you go to a restaurant and uh, get a fried catfish, then uh, that's most likely going to be a channel catfish because that's the species that is reared in, in, in farm ponds and is uh, widely cultivated for uh, aquaculture for uh, consumption. Uh, the uh, largest catfish, the largest channel catfish uh, found in Alabama was an 18.1 kilogram. And let's see, that's 18 times 2 is 36 plus 0.1 is another 4. So 36 plus 4 is 40 pounds of, uh, of a channel catfish, which is a pretty impressive fish. This is a fish that likes deep pools in uh, slow to moderately moving rivers uh, of, of moderate to large size. So uh, if you go fishing in Alabama and you catch a catfish, it could be a channel catfish. It's a very pretty silvery fish and it's got some nice little black dots along it. The, the difference between the channel cat and the blue cat, if you look at the anal fin here, the uh, channel catfish, that, that edge is kind of curved and in the blue catfish that's a very straight line so you when they're young especially blue catfish and channel catfish look alike third are there any smallmouth bass in shades creek or the cobb river all righty so stewart from shades creek had also asked about uh, the smallmouth bass and whether or not there were smallmouth bass in uh, in the Cahaba River. And if you look at this uh, range map, you'll see that there are, south, uh, there are small mouths that were up in the Tennessee Basin, but the Cahaba doesn't really have uh, the small mouth species. Now, at the same time I say that, there is the ecological equivalent of the small mouth bass, which is the red eye bass. Uh, it, it, it has the same similar lifestyle and uh, habits, and it's uh, to catch it is similar to catching a smallmouth bass. And you can see that this red-eye bass is uh, pretty widely distributed over central uh, Alabama. So if you uh, go fishing in a small stream uh, in Alabama and you get uh, a bass on your line, it's, it's not unlikely that it's a, a red-eye bass. And uh, it's a lot of fun to catch because they fight just like a smallmouth does. Well, thanks for your questions. If you have others, send them in. We'll see if we can get them answered. Take care.